Today I'm going to make a crimson lake pigment from an insect called cochineal. Now what I have here are their dead and completely dried out bodies and they're that way because I had to order them online. I had to order them online because cochineal are a type of parasitic scaled insect that only live in the desert and since I'm not in a desert I had to get them this way. I included a picture of a nest of cochineal bugs on their host prickly pear cacti as well as the biosynthesis of the carmine pigment that happens inside of their bodies. In any case, to begin synthesizing the pigment, I first need to grind down my bugs into as fine a powder as I can manage. This is added to a large beaker along with a liter of water and I'm gonna stir it thoroughly. You can see as I stir it that the bug slurry becomes a pale red color and that is the carminic acid dissolving in water. Next, I'm gonna add 30 grams of sodium carbonate and stir that in thoroughly as well. The now alkaline bug slurry is going to be boiled for 30 minutes, which is going to extract most of the carminic acid. Now this can be used as is, as a textile dye, but I want a pigment that can be used for painting. To do this, I need to complex two carminic acid molecules to an aluminum atom, which will make the insoluble pigment carmine. This pigment is still used widely to this day, specifically in food and makeup products, and if you see something with the ingredient natural red 4 in the ingredients, uh, you're eating bugs. Which is not a problem, it's non-toxic and completely safe. Anyway, to jump back into the procedure, what I'm demonstrating here is that carminic acid is a natural pH indicator that will turn a yellow in acidic conditions and a dark purple in basic ones. I also spent about two days filtering off all my bug body material to leave me with a pure carminic acid solution. This took forever because biological material tends to gum up filters pretty bad, but it was the best idea I had at the time. In any case, once I get a relatively pure carminic acid solution, I'm going to heat my solution to 90 degrees Celsius and slowly add potassium or sodium alum until I reach a neutral pH. Now you can use a litmus paper for this, but the problem is the solution is so dark it'll be hard to see the color of the litmus paper. It would be better to go on the color as it will return to a bright red color as it neutralizes, and also you can go based on the bubbling. If you use sodium carbonate, the solution will begin to aggressively bubble as you reach a neutral pH, and it'll stop once you've hit that point. Once this part is done, I allow it to sit overnight to allow all of the insoluble pigment to settle to the bottom. Now since I ended up with basically two liters of carminic acid solution after my filtering earlier, I decided to process one at 90 degrees C and the other at room temperature to see if it made much of a difference, and you can see that it did make a pretty huge difference. The filtrate from my batch that wasn't heated is still very red, which indicates that a lot of the carminic acid didn't react with the alum to form the aluminum complex. That said, I found out that the heating is not an optional step. In any case, once this filtering step is done, I unload all of the contents of the filters to this baking tray and allow it to dry in air for a couple days. This is my final product, and you can see some salt crystals that formed on it, but this isn't really a problem unless it's being used for culinary purposes. Since I'm using it for art purposes, I load it all onto a mortar and pestle and crush it as fine as I possibly can. As I usually do when I make pigments, I'm going to crush my pigment up with some linseed oil and try to use it as a paint. And to answer your question, um, I do not have a molar. I will get one someday. Maybe. In any case, I crush this down as much as I can in a mortar and pestle and then try to paint with it. You'll have to pardon my lack of any artistic talent or creativity whatsoever. And you'll have to pardon that the paint itself is a bit gritty from the whole not having a molar thing. But you get the idea of the tone and the color of the paint itself. I think this is one of the more beautiful pigments I've made. Um, it's more red in person. It looks kind of purple in the video. In any case, I hope you liked this. I hope you found it interesting and follow to see more like it.